Link Monsters really did change the game of Yu-Gi-Oh! And as the video title says, they kind of broke it to a degree. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, it's your host with the most, Avery LR32 here, and destroy the very exhausted Boo Boo Stain off of that like and subscribe button as we climb even higher to, I guess, our overall goal of 2,000 subscribers. I would say 1,400 ladder, but I feel like I'm kind of wearing that out. So I really do appreciate all of the support. Be sure to hit that ding dong notification bell so you can be part of the A gang. Also, be sure to check out my book. Link is on the channel. Yes, I wrote a book, believe it or not, and the link should also be in the description. But enough shameless plugging kind of want to just get right on into it i just got home from work so i'm super exhausted so i apologize but this has been on my mind for a couple of days as i've sort of taken a step back from the game of you give not in a competitive sense but i'm just sort of in a waiting period that i feel like a lot of people are you know we're in a tier zero format i'm looking forward to tenpai dragon i'm play testing the deck like crazy i've already got a build set in stone pre-ban list obviously um but i know what i want to play as soon as legacy of destruction comes out I've got all the cards together. I just put in the Tempai Dragon cards and I'm good to go. But I've been doing a lot of sitting back and waiting and just relaxing and chilling and playing retro formats because I've also wanted to focus on making content. And one of the things that I've thought about looking at the game overall is link monsters and summoning mechanics and things that have just changed Yu-Gi-Oh permanently forever. And you have to understand where I'm coming from. I've been playing competitively. I went to my first locals 2008. It should be, yeah, 2008. Two weeks before the Fusion deck name was changed to the Extra deck. And I know for a fact it was two weeks because I remember going to two locals. And then on the third locals, um, I remember my buddy Charlie. Shout out to you, Charlie, if you happen to see this. I remember him saying, your Fusion deck is no longer called your Extra deck. It's now called, or uh, the Fusion deck is no longer called the Fusion deck. It's now called your Extra deck. I don't want to hear none of y'all be calling it the Fusion deck. It's now called your Extra deck. <laughs> and, uh, you know, we just took off from there. So I've been playing this game for basically, well, yeah, actually, definitely 16 years um, and counting, right? And I've seen a lot of changes. I've lived through the wind-up OTK format with three shock masters locking out monster spells and traps and like just getting dunked on getting my hand and also me looping people's hands for five sometimes six if you had pot of avarice with wind up hand loop um i played necros i lost my ass on zodiac spent 700 dollars and lost my ass i remember spending 99 dollars and 99 cents a piece on barrages on tcg player all of that to say all of the formats that I've lived through, Link Monsters have really changed the game. And I would argue are the most insane custom cards Konami has ever printed. And if you notice what Konami's been putting out lately, they've been putting out a lot of fucking custom cards. Have you seen that Gimmick Puppet Field spell? Even though I don't think like Gimmick Puppets are going to be absolutely insane, I think that they have potential. But I don't think they're going to be as insane as a lot of people are thinking Like after just seeing the cards. That field spell is a custom card. For those of you who don't know what custom card means, it means like if you ever look at these casuals who like make custom cards and put them on Dueling Book and they've got like 5,000 different effects and they're all super busted, like it's not something Konami would ever make. That's what people mean by making something a custom card. You can't tell me having a fucking field spell that says your gimmick puppets can't be destroyed by battle. Also, they're basically just unaffected by everything while this thing's up. You can't tell me that's not a custom card. That's That's insane. But Link Monsters, I feel, totally changed the game, especially even when you look at the ban list. They've slowly but surely have been creeping up to have the most type of banned cards on the list. Like, for a while, it was Exceeds. There were a lot of Exceeds that were banned. There are some that should still be banned, like Beatrice. But Link Monsters have slowly but surely been creeping up on the ban list. Like, you look at things like uh, Summon Sorceress, Nightmare Goblin, uh, Topologic Gumblar Dragon, being able to loop the opponent for like six cards out of their hand, or whatever it was, five cards, whatever it was, it doesn't even matter at this point. There have been so many insane Link Monsters that I feel like even the most broken of Xyz Monsters, those Xyz Monsters would blush. Like, there are still some busted ones from back in the day, like Shockmaster comes to mind. Granted, we have more hand traps now, uh, but... Shockmaster, I think you could argue, is still a really busted card, especially just being able to, if you can bring out two level fours, make a Shockmaster call monster effects, lock out all those hand traps, 
you know, you have to have the imperm at that point. Like, that's still just insane. Obviously, things like Zemmighty and Invoker, I feel like, could come back and no one would really care. And if you're concerned about wind-up FTK, you just ban the Hunter or you just make it a, um, what do you call it, a hard once per turn. And I don't know if this is the most depressing time in Yu-Gi-Oh!, I don't even know if it's really the most broken time because there's been a lot of broken ass formats. And I would argue, especially whenever we talk about like how it seems like Yu-Gi-Oh is dying, at least in Europe anyway, uh, I would argue that definitely in like the 2008-2009 range, uh, when we had Teledad and all that running around and Konami was suing Upper Deck, it seemed like the game was going to die then. Um, that was definitely something that was up in the air back in the day. But... When it comes to just like breaking Yu-Gi-Oh in half and like what kind of boards you're capable of making, obviously we had power creep over the years, but it just seemed like Link Monsters over these four or five years now that we've had the mechanic and haven't really had any sort of rule changes other than the Master Rule 2020 update, it just seems like that they have broken the game to such a higher level that exceeds monsters ever did. Like obviously, like I mentioned Shockmaster, you've got Utopic Zexel as a thought, you have these things. But it just seems like Lynx took it to a whole nother level that it always makes me concerned when we get like these big bad Link boss monsters that uh, you always have to wonder what's gonna be the next broken thing. Like for the longest time, Firewall Dragon was the broken thing because it caused all of these FTKs not being a once per turn. It took them forever to ban it, and then they finally banned Firewall Dragon and then gave it the errata. But it makes me concerned for the future of the game, and maybe this is just the tinfoil hat that's up my butt that may be on my head soon, <laughs> but when you see the lack of events in Europe, when you see the lack of attendance, when you have someone like me, I'm not trying to brag, I'm just being honest, who has over a decade of experience playing this game competitively, going to events, meeting people, hearing the community around the world talk about this game and how things have evolved, there are definitely brighter spots in this game's history. I mean, even if you go back to pre-Fandom Nightmare, it's a very healthy format. It's kind of boring, at least in my opinion, because it wasn't really nothing exciting. You know, it was basically just the same decks of the format, and then... Fire King was kind of being the best deck. And then Phantom Nightmare came out and Snake Eyes just crapped on everything. And so it will get cleaned up. It will get better. I guarantee you within a year or even two years from now, I'm probably more like six months to a year from now, we're going to look back at like this video. You know, I'm, maybe someone will comment on this video or you'll like the video. And uh, you'll come back to it in six months to a year and be like, wow, this video aged poorly. Avery. It, it, really, the format's not all that bad. You can call this the ramblings of an old Yu-Gi-Oh boomer. You can call this uh, the inside the mind of someone who misses how the game used to be, but I, I think that it's really true. I don't think anyone can sit here and say a card like Topologic Gumblar Dragon is not a custom card, because it is, pimp. I don't think anyone will sit here and say Christron Halky Fibrax is an absolutely healthy card and doesn't just bust a load of power creep all over the the game like it's it, it's a whole new level and especially like when i've done these Yu-Gi-Oh retrospectives which you can find the playlist on the channel shameless plug i know um you can see the evolution of the game obviously from like beat down in 2002 to now there's going to be change but even just a couple years you can see change between say like edison to like hat format or edison to dragon ruler whatever the case may be it's interesting to look at how the game evolves and even those sh short amounts of time. And it makes me do, to a degree, wish that the game would kind of go back to what it was. I really don't want to see the game die. And that's what really has me worried, especially for Europe, that maybe the game is on its way out. The Speed Tool, the Speed Duel Midterm Paradox box was a USA exclusive only product. Didn't go to Europe. Uh, you look at the lack of events. And I'm sure some people are going to say, well, Avery, you look at the sales of Yu-Gi-Oh! You look at the billions of dollars or the billions of yen, whatever it is, that they made in Japan. That's exactly it. It's in Japan. We need the hard numbers for the TCG. Japan doesn't really matter in this sense. You can say, oh, the game's not dying because they're doing well in Japan. But that doesn't mean anything. That's like me saying Force of Will is doing really good because here's their sales numbers, yet it's been dead here in Jacksonville, Florida for years. 
Like, no one plays fucking Force of Will, at least as far as I know, in Jacksonville. Like, the game died, like, five years ago here, from what I understand. Uh, at least last I heard. So I don't really think that that's very comparable. I feel like you're kind of comparing apples to oranges at that point. One market could be very different from another. Perfect example is video games. You look at how the Xbox and the PlayStation sell in Japan and compare it to America. PlayStation sold absolutely amazingly in Japan. PlayStation's got that locked down. Xbox can't sell a damn console worth anything in Japan. Like, they're they're using Xboxes as, like, trash bins. Like, no one wants an Xbox over in Japan. But over here in the States and in Europe, it's much more popular. Guys, let me know what you think down in the comments below. Am I saying I hate how Yu-Gi-Oh! is now? No. I think that there are a lot of good things that the game has to offer today when you explore it and when you see it. I do think that hand traps are a bit crazy. At the same time, I also understand that they are a balancing point for the game to where decks can't just pop off uninhibited. You know, try playing against Dragon Ruler format, Tier 0, and both of you are playing Dragon Rulers, which there's no skill in that uh, mirror match. I'm still holding to that. And you just get to watch the Dragon Ruler player pop off and maybe draw 8 to 10 cards off of one fucking Super Rejuve. By the way, they opened up Max C. By the way, they have Vanity's Emptiness, so you can't even special summon, so you can't play the game. Oh, you didn't open up Blaster? Haha! <laughs> you lose, Sugar Boo Bear. It was not a skillful mirror match, and I'm still holding to that. I'll always hold to that. And I played in that format, so, yeah. Guys, let me know what you think down in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.